Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. As promised, here is the Interrail Guide. Well, part one of it at least. Okay, here's the thing. I originally started working on this Interrail guide with the intention of packing as much information into one whole video for you. Instead, what I've decided to do was break this whole Interrail guide into several smaller videos. That way you can go through them like you would chapters of a book and you can dip into them when you feel like there might be something useful for you to take away. In this first chapter, I'm gonna talk about what Interrail is, who's it for, and what kind of passes you can get. Let's get into it. Interrail is a company that started way back in 1959 and they've done one thing and one thing only since then. And that is to offer flexible rail passes around Europe. Amazingly, today their passes allow travelers to reach over 40,000 destinations spanning 33 countries all through the great European railway network. You may have heard the name Eurorail and might be wondering what the difference between Eurorail and Interrail actually is. Well, the answer is nothing. They are one and the same company, but which one you interact with will depend where your passport's from. European citizens will need to interact with Interrail, whereas non-European citizens will purchase their tickets from Eurorail. To avoid confusion, we'll just use the term Interrail moving forward, but do know that everything we say still applies to Eurorail. Okay, so at this point, you might be thinking Interrail sounds great, but how does it actually work? Well, once you've bought a pass from Interrail, you can start think of it as a universal path that allows you to start hopping on and off trains around Europe. I'm gonna add a little asterisk on that and we'll get back to that asterisk a little bit later on because there are some terms and conditions to it, but the basis of it is it's a universal path that allows you to travel around Europe. To purchase a pass, head over to the Interrail website. Once purchased, you choose between a digital or a paper pass. We'll talk all about the two choices later on, but for now, just know we much prefer the digital pass. After you've checked out, purchased your pass and received your confirmation email with your pass number, you can go ahead and download the Rail Planner app and add your mobile pass there. And once activated, you can start searching and adding your train journeys to your pass. All of this is done within the app itself. And that's it. You just need to start showing your pass to the ticket officer or scanning it on the ticket machine to board trains. No need to queue up at any train station and no need to purchase any ticket when you're there. Don't worry if you change your mind about which trains you want to take when you're traveling. You can simply swipe, remove it and add a new train journey instead. This can even be done on the same day you're traveling. So it gives you the ultimate amount of flexibility. Okay. Let's get back to the all important asterisks I mentioned earlier when I said that an Interrail pass was akin to a universal train pass around Europe. Well, there are some terms and conditions to this. Not all trains are included in the Interrail pass. Some just simply aren't. The other thing you have to be aware of is that some trains, although you can board them for Interrail pass, they require a reservation on top, which is an additional fee on top. But even when you include these two additional factors, we still believe Interrail Pass is an amazing option. It simplifies your European rail adventure. It provides a level of flexibility that you simply can't get without it. And perhaps most importantly, offers potential savings for your travel budget. Before we move any further, I wanted to quickly show you how to make a train reservation if you needed to do so. Oh, before I forget, you have to do this before you board the train. Okay, so to book a seat reservation, just go to the app again and find the train you're interested in. It should have a little note that says there's a seat reservation that's required and it'll come up a little table as well, which will give you an estimate of the price of the seat reservation. Just follow the on-screen instructions and you'll either be taken to the Interrail website where you need to log in to land on the reservation bookings page or the app will direct you to the relevant train operator site to make the reservation. For some really popular train routes, you'll want to reserve your seat way ahead of time to ensure you get a seat. This is especially true if you're thinking about traveling during peak holiday season or peak travel times. 
When it comes to interrail passes, there are a few options that you need to consider. The first one is whether you're gonna be traveling across multiple countries around Europe, or you're gonna travel extensively within one country. That will push you in either the direction of one country pass or the global pass. The next decision you're gonna to have to make is how many days of train travel you're gonna have within your whole travel period. Sounds confusing at first, but think of this. So let's say you're traveling for one month. You might not be taking a train every single day of that month. Actually, you might only find yourself traveling on trains seven days of the whole 30 days. Well, in that case, you can save yourself some money and get a seven day travel one month pass. One recommendation that we can give you when deciding this is the more days of train travel that you give yourself, the more flexible you're gonna be when you're out traveling. We went for the one month global pass that allowed us to use trains every single day. That way, if we chopped and changed our itinerary as we went, which we did, then it would still allow us to efficiently travel to places that we wanted to do so. What we will say is if you do end up using all your days travel within the period and you want more, you can purchase an additional pass. But of course, that's gonna come at extra cost. So definitely think thoroughly how many days you think you're gonna need. The more thorough you are with your planning of your interrail journey, the more likely you're gonna be able to shift down to the lower amount of days train travel you can have. The third option you're gonna have is whether you wanna go paper or digital passes. We've actually had the experience of traveling with both paper and digital passes. So we're in a pretty good space to recommend one or the other. And without a doubt, we definitely recommend digital passes. With digital passes, you don't have to worry about carrying around damaging or losing your paper pass because it's all on your phone. So it's one less item to worry about when you're traveling around. Another reason why we love digital passes over the paper pass because you don't have to hand write down all the train station names and the times on your travel pass. It's all automatically done for you within the app. This is great because if you're changing and chopping up your trains that you're taking, you don't have to worry about incorrectly putting the train station names in or having to cross them out. We actually ran out of space on our first pass. They do include an extra page for you. And if you finish that, you can download and print out another page. But as you can see, it's just a bit more of hassle. We just prefer the digital pass. And of course, with a digital pass, just save some paper, you save some trees. What I do need to mention though, is that the pass is linked to the app on your smartphone. So if you lose your phone and you quickly go and buy a new phone, you will need to contact customer services with your pass number to sort that out because you need to de-link it with your old phone and reactivate it onto your new phone. Another decision for you to make is whether you're going for a first class pass or second class pass. Pretty obvious what they mean. A first class pass allows you to go onto some of the first class carriages of a train, whereas the second class only allows you to go on the second class carriages. So I just wanted to wrap up the video talking about who Interrail Pass is actually for. So I think sometimes Interrail is associated with younger travelers, people that are on their gap year or backpackers. But I just think this couldn't be further from the truth. Of course, the pass is perfect for those types of travelers too, but I actually think the pass is perfect for all kinds of travelers. We've already touched on a few of the points earlier when I mentioned an interrail pass can allow you to save money on your travels. Who doesn't want to save money on their travels? I don't know any type of traveler that won't go, oh, if I could save some money, I wouldn't. Please note that me saying that interrail pass will allow you to save money on your travels doesn't immediately mean that it'll help you save money on your travels. You'll need to first work out what trains you're considering taking, what the prices of those trains are, and just add them up, get a rough estimate of your total train spending, and whether that's lower or higher than an interrail pass would be for you. On both the train adventures we did around Europe, one last year, the one year before that, it worked out way cheaper to get interrail pass for both those times, as we were using the trains very, very often, sometimes multiple times throughout the day. The other two points I made earlier were simplicity and flexibility when it comes to the interrail pass. You just rock up to the station and you hop on and you hop off. 
That's all you need to do. There's no need to fumble about trying to speak a different language to someone that doesn't understand what you're saying and you buying a wrong ticket, being late for your train and missing your train. It's just way easier with Interrail Pass. The other type of person I think Interrail Passes are perfect for are people that want to travel by planes less. Because when you're traveling by plane, sure you get a beautiful view of the beautiful sky, but you don't see the destinations on ground level. When you're traveling through these European countries by train, some of the most beautiful landscapes you came across was straight from the window of the train. You get these amazing, amazing views that you just won't get when you're flying a biplane. Traveling by train, there's also no weight restrictions when it comes to luggage. So one of the biggest problems we frequently have when we fly by a plane is our camera bag is too heavy. We often have to put lenses in our pocket or carry our camera, whatever it takes to get our bag on board since we don't want to check it in. Well, you don't have that issue when you're traveling by train. The last benefit when it comes to the debate of plane versus train is just the health of our planet. People that are environmentally conscious will know that train travel is much better for the planet than plane traveling is. We can help cut a lot of the carbon emissions just by traveling with trains instead of planes. And that's it for this video. So hopefully you have a better insight into what Interrail actually is, whether it's suitable for you and whether you want to use it for one of your future travels too. If you have any questions about Interrail, do leave them in the comments section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. In the next video, I'm gonna be talking about planning your Interrail trip. So things do you wanna think about before you go off on your journey? That should be a pretty important one. So I hope you look forward to it. See you in the next one.